Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica Ward King, also known as the Stigma Crusher. And here on this channel, we deal with issues of mental health and mental illness from my twin perspectives as a person with lived experience of bipolar 2 disorder, as well as a person with a PhD in experimental psychology. Does that sound like your jam? You are more than welcome here. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and if you would like to be notified each and every week when I post, hit that notifications bell as well. Share and white like widely, please. And with that, let us start stigma crushing for this week. So as of now, I have had four treatments of Spravato, or the esketamine version of ketamine. And um, while ketamine can work transformatively within a couple of hours for some people, it can take up to four weeks of the acute treatment, so twice a week for four weeks for any gains to be seen in mood. I am one of those folks, apparently, who is going to have to wait because after four treatments, uh, my mood is lower than it ever was. Um, so I'm struggling pretty hard, and it made me think of all of the ways that we treat depression and bipolar disorder and mood disorders in general, and how all of our medications seem to take such a long time to actually kick in and work. Your standard antidepressant, they, you know, you could feel something within a couple of weeks, but it's standard not to feel any better for, you know, six, even eight weeks of taking a new medication and titrating up on that medication and getting to a therapeutic level and all of those fun things that happen. Um, and so while you're waiting for your antidepressant to kick in and have antidepressant effects, you can actually experience a worsening of mood. We're not sure why that happens either. So there are a few kind of hypotheses as to why it takes so long for antidepressants to work and why we get worse in the meantime. And let's look at those today because waiting for antidepressants to work is a insert expletive here. So one of the things that they, they, they thought that antidepressants were doing was keeping serotonin and norepinephrine, those amines, those monoamines, in the synaptic cleft, so the, the place between two neurons, they're, they're as signalers to get the information from one neuron to another neuron so that the brain, the network of neurons can work. And so what they thought these antidepressants were doing was keeping the serotonin or norepinephrine in that synaptic cleft so that all the signaling could go on. Now that effect happens fairly quickly. I mean, these antidepressants, so these selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, norepinephrine and serotonin reuptake inhibitors, all of those different kinds of, um, of standard antidepressants, they do a fairly good job at upregulating serotonin and norepinephrine in the synaptic cleft fairly quickly. And yet, we still don't expect to see the actual antidepressant effect for several weeks. Now, some of the, there, we don't really know why, but there are some theories. One of them is that the actual antidepressant effect is not so much the temporary keeping of the norepinephrine and serotonin in that synaptic cleft, but that instead it is acting on the DNA, on the, the serotonin transporter gene. And so it's actually changing the way the cell regulates serotonin for itself. And that can take some time. And one of the, uh, the, the best explanations I've ever heard of this is like if you sit down with a, a, a dietitian and you've decided that you, know, you, you want to maybe lose some weight or, or gain some muscle tone and you want your eating to be, to be uh, healthy. And so you sit down with a dietitian and you go through all the foods that you currently eat that you probably shouldn't be eating and then the healthy foods that can replace them. But you've just been on a great big shopping run and your fridge and your pantry is full of the foods that you and your family used to eat that you've decided now aren't that healthy, but you don't want to waste your money and your food. And so you say, okay, I'll take these few weeks to eat up what I've got. And then once those unhealthy foods are gone, we can stock up with the healthy foods. And so even though you've seen your dietitian and you started your new treatment regime immediately, you end up using up those you know, extra unhealthy foods for a few weeks. Then you can start eating the healthy foods and it takes a few weeks after that for any change in your weight or your, your health to be noticed. And so that is a great explanation of what might be going on 
in the cells of the brain when we put an antidepressant in. The, there's enough of the gene already expressed in those cells for quite a few weeks before it turns over and maybe this new gene is expressed because of your antidepressant. So that's something that could be going on. We're not sure if that's what's going on though. There are other things that could be going on. The thing that's really frustrating though is that you do actually feel effects of the antidepressant medication pretty instantaneously, I would say, from my experience. So you, you get those side effects like um, gastrointestinal issues. A lot of antidepressants, well, there's a lot of neurons in your gastrointestinal system. That's the second most um, concentrated place that neurons are in the body outside of the central nervous system. And so your antidepressant will also act on those pathways. And you can often get the gastrointestinal side effects of diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, uh, just general malaise. And those tend to show up pretty quickly. So you know that you are actually absorbing your medication, that it's actually getting into your body and affecting your body because you're getting those nasty side effects. You can also pretty instantaneously get the, the sedating uh, qualities of a lot of antidepressants. Most, not all, of antidepressants can be quite sedating, make you more tired, more listless than usual. Um, and that can be pretty instantaneous. I mean, you can take your first dose of your medication at night, the first day that you get it prescribed by your doctor, and fall asleep real quick um, because of the sedating properties. So you know that it's affecting your body. It's just not doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is the antidepressant effect. Another thing to consider is that the, this is mental illness is not only biological, but it's also in some of the patterns that we use to think and the way that we feel. And so expectations around medications and how they work and, and what kind of antidepressant effect you might get can also play into this. And the way that you interact with the world doesn't immediately get changed by medications. That can take time. And so that's probably also a factor that's affecting how long it takes antidepressants to work, if they work at all. Now, with different newer kinds of medications like ketamine, they say the instantaneous effect can actually appear for antidepression as well um, and they're not sure why that happens or how that happens or why it doesn't happen for everybody and some people like me have to wait the full course to see if they're going to work. Um, we're, we're just not entirely sure. And then there's the issue of your mood uh, actually getting worse while you are waiting for your antidepressant treatment to kick in. One of the reasons they think that that is, is again, going back to the, the cognitive and the way that we think and the way that we feel. And if you're taking a medication that you think is going to help you and it's not, the despair can set in, the help, hopelessness and helplessness can set in. Another factor is that those side effects kick in a lot sooner than the antidepressant effect and they can be really difficult to work with, difficult to live with. And so if you're finding that, you know, every morning you're waking up, this is me right now actually taking Trintilix, and every morning I wake up and take it and I get nausea uh, within the half an hour. And it's really difficult to live with nausea. You, anybody that's, had, that's been nauseous before knows it shuts down the whole train if you get nauseous. Uh, it's really difficult to, to just push through that feeling. And so you find yourself, you know, getting physically worse. You might find that there are sexual side effects to the medication you're taking that's making your relationships much more difficult to navigate and your own satisfaction much more difficult to take. You may find that you are getting dizzy or headaches or um, any of those other kinds of side effects that show up from these medications, but your mood isn't yet getting any better, so it's difficult to kind of push through them and work through them. Now, with most of these medications, those side effects will lessen over time, and I'm finding that with my Trintilix. I'm now into the second month of it, um, but uh, it is getting less, the nausea and, and vomiting is getting less over time, and so it's getting more easy to, to take it and to live with it. But if my mood was better, I would have a lot easier time saying, okay, well, I've got this, you know, these horrible gastro effects, but I feel better in my own mind, so you know, I can take the side effects, but when you're getting the side effects and no benefit, it can get really discouraging. So those kinds of things interact with your expectation of the medication as well as the negative effects it might be having, they can really interact. 
Now another thing that can happen, and this is often a black box warning on a lot of medications, is that for younger people, adolescents and young adults, there is an increased risk of suicidality when you first start uh, a lot of antidepressants. They're not quite sure why that is um, specifically for young people. It may have to do with uh, their, their developing brain. It may have to do with expectations. It may have to do with impulsivity. Um, quite often, actually, with these antidepressants, your energy will increase before your mood increases. And you get that horrible mixed state where you still have the depressive thinking, the depressive feelings, the mood is low, um, but you have more energy. And so it's not a good energy. It's like a grating energy um, where you know you, you're much more irritable, you're much more agitated, you're much more fidgety, much more action oriented, but the actions aren't oriented towards something good and positive. They're oriented more towards something negative. So your negative thoughts and feelings. And so you can get where you have these negative feelings and now suddenly because of the medication you have the energy to act on them and it's that impulsivity that can possibly put people at a higher risk of suicidal thoughts and feelings during the treatment before it's actually kicked in and I've had that experience actually with the ketamine which acts differently than a lot of antidepressants it acts on the glutamate system rather than the norepinephrine or serotonin systems but um, it has a similar effect where if you're not getting better soon enough and you're having that extra energy and, and your brain's kind of getting all muddled up. You don't know if you're coming or going because of this medication. Something is in there changing things, but not for the better yet. Uh, you can have that increased suicidal risk, suicidal thoughts, ideations. Um, and so that's where I come from in this particular video when I am dealing with the side effects of the ketamine, the, um, the negative effects on my family. I feel like I'm a burden. I feel like I don't deserve to have this treatment when you know others can't access it. Talking about privilege, the, the video that I put up last week. Um, but also all of the time dedication, the money dedication that I'm putting towards this and I'm, you know, my, my thoughts are going to, it's not working, nothing ever works. I'm going to be one of the 50% that it doesn't work for and I will have wasted all this time and wasted all this money and put my family through stress for nothing. And so these thoughts are just churning around in my head. Um, but also, you know, my anxiety is higher, my, my, I'm getting nauseous from the treatments, um, you know, all of these things are just kind of swirling around and it is increasing suicidal thoughts and feelings uh, for myself. I've had that too with other, with more standard antidepressants, I've had that happen as well. So this is just kind of a heads up that these things happen. We don't entirely sure why, mostly because we're not entirely sure how our antidepressant medications actually work. A lot more work needs to be done and they're doing it, but it's difficult, it's complicated. So they can do, you know, uh, scientific studies into what the medications do in a cell, so in vitro, like in a, in a petri dish. They can take a look at animal models of depression and antidepressant effects and manipulate genes there and see what happens, you know, in the brains of a rodent, for example, or even a monkey. But it's much more difficult to find out what's happening, what they call in vivo, in humans, what's actually happening in the brains of walking, talking humans that are receiving these medications. Um, so for now, the best we can do is manage it as best we can. And so if you are having side effects from medications that are really, really difficult to live with, um, and you're finding that it's, it's making your mental health worse rather than any better, talk to your doctor. There are usually either other medications that you can take as well. So I've been using just over-the-counter Gravol to help with my nausea in the morning. Um, but there are also other medications that you might be able to switch to that have different side effects that maybe aren't as bad for your gastrointestinal or aren't as bad to cause headaches or don't cause as many sexual side effects or whatever the case may be, which might make it easier to, to take that period in between when you start taking your medication and when it finally actually kicks in. Also try to combat, and this is, I'm, I'm now speaking to myself more than anyone else, but try to combat those thoughts uh, that, well, th this isn't going to work. Nothing has ever worked for me. I'm going to be one of those people that it doesn't work for. What am I going to do next? There's, there's no other options after this. This, this was it. I've tried so many, nothing ever worked. You know, those thoughts. Yeah, yes, Jessica, I know those thoughts. I say to myself, try to combat those thoughts with a, a little bit more objectivity. Um, and so it is, it is rare 
or for a person to have treatment resistant depression that responds to nothing. Eventually, I mean, there are always new, new treatments available. There's always new things happening in your life and in your body. And if something's not working now, there are other things to try. There are combinations of things to try. It would take you probably longer than you have uh, to actually try all of the possible combinations of medications and other therapies, um, repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. I talked about a couple weeks ago. ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, deep brain stimulation, also talk therapies. There's different kinds of talk therapies where if you tried one, it might another one might work for you, or maybe trying one in concert with a different medication might work for you. So there's always going to be more things to try. You are not going to hit the end of the road. Try to remember that and try to remember too that it's normal for this to take four, six, eight weeks before you know whether it's going to work for you and that's okay and you will get there and I'm saying this again more to myself than to anyone else. Um, if you're finding that you have different ex experiences of antidepressant effects please do comment down below. These are just you know my lived experiences but other people have really great stories where they started a medication you know within two weeks it was working for them and, and it's been working ever since and that's okay and that's great. Um, and it's good to hear those stories from people that have found the thing that finally works for them. So please do comment down below. That's all I have for this week. Hopefully when I come to update you next week, I will have a happier story to tell with my uh, ketamine um, journey. Um, and do remember to follow me over on TikTok where I am microblogging the experience and trying to figure out how this is going to play out for me. So take care, everyone, and I will talk to you again next week. Bye. Stigma Crusher.